Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 57 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you all of the rest of the code for flying the spaceship around in pretty much any direction that you could ever imagine all over your game board and doing all the other things we've covered in the previous parts of the tutorial. If you haven't watched part 55 and 56 of this tutorial, you should definitely watch them before watching this because in 55, we went from this simple list of just things that we wanted our class to be able to do and then progress the whole way down to create all of the methods and variables that we used previously. Remember, while this is a pretty good game programming tutorial, this is really all about object-oriented design principles when it gets down to brass tacks. So let's get into the code. Okay, so here we are again in spaceship.java, and I just have to add a couple more methods to this guy. Of course, if I want this guy to move, I need to create a method called move, and that's what I'm going to do right here. And this is all so simple because we're using object-oriented programming. Now, what we're going to do, and we want to move this spaceship around, is increase the x origin based off of our current velocity for our ship, because we're gonna have the velocity of the ship increase as the person holds the button down on the keyboard. So we're just gonna to refer to other methods that we've created here in the past. Now we're just gonna go this, and we're gonna say get x velocity, right like this, and then right like that. And this is just a reference again, increase x position is way up here at 35, see? Increase x position, it receives a double increment amount, and then we're going to increment whatever the center position is for our spaceship by that increment amount. Okay, so let's get back down here again. Now remember, whenever we were going through the creation of our UML class diagram, we decided that we wanted the ship to go off the board and then flip over to the opposite direction. So how are we gonna do that? Well, simple if statement, and then we're gonna say this, get x center, which is the center x point for our spaceship on the screen. And we're gonna say if that x value is less than zero, and we wanna perform some operations on it. Mainly, we're gonna say this again. This is just a reference to the spaceship. Set x center, and then we're gonna say game board width. So what that just simply says is if the x position goes to a negative number or off the game board, we want to set its position to the rightmost point on the screen. And then it's going to continue to move in its normal way. Else, and I like to do it this way, other people do it in different other ways, but I'm going to say this, get x center is greater than game board width, which means it went off the screen on the right side of the screen. Well, in that situation, we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to go this set x center and we're going to set it to zero so if it goes too far to the right we're going to set it to zero which is going to throw it to the left most point so that pretty cool stuff and then of course we're also going to have to do the exact same thing for the y vector so increase y position we're just going to say this get y velocity and there we are we're just going to get all those different things and then we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing here to make sure that it stays on our game board so just paste that down there and in this situation we're going to say get y center and if it's less than zero, this is giving me an error because this should be a capital B, and that should be a capital B, like that. And this is going to be changed to height. So that just means that if it goes up over the top of the screen, because remember the vectors are all based off of the upper left-hand corner being the zero, zero point. So if it goes up this way, that means it's going to be a negative number. So we need to change that. And of course, change that to Y, and then come down here and change this to height. And Y, and Y. And everything else there is the same. And we are done with the spaceship class. So let's file save that guy. And then we're going to jump over into the game board so that we can throw the spaceship onto our game board. Now the best thing that can happen here is to not have a lot of changes. That is the goal with object-oriented programming. We don't want all the classes affecting each other too much. But since we are on the game board, we are going to be monitoring mouse key presses. And... I think that pretty much makes sense, except eventually what we're going to do is have all these handled by their own classes, meaning the mouse clicks. So let's just paste that in there. And this is just going to allow us to figure out which key was pressed and key held, if you don't remember from the past, means that the person's holding the key down 
and that just means that we want the ship to continue to thrust or go forward. And there we are, we don't even have to come up with anything original, we just copied and pasted that, and that's cool. So now we're going to have to go down through the code and handle all the changes that are going to occur because the key was pressed. And we're not changing that many things, which is good. When you're not changing many things in other classes to make another class work, you know you're doing the right sort of things. And here we are. This is the magical location whenever we are going to be monitoring rotation for the ship. And here we're just going to say the ship, and we're going to say increase rotation angle. And there we are. It's pretty cool. Don't have to change that many things. You know, jump over into the spaceship and see exactly what is going on with rotation angle increase rotation angle as you can see right there what it's doing is making sure that the angle does not go over 355 or 360 so it's just keeping that angle consistent and if it doesn't it's increasing it by five degrees as the person holds down the d key which is represented by the number 68 in regards to the key code so that's pretty simple and guess what we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing whenever they hold down the A key. We're going to rotate them in a different direction. So we're just going to come down there, boom, and then this is going to be changed to decrease rotation angle. So again, it's very logical. It makes a lot of sense. And now we need to scroll a little bit further down here because we don't have anything in here in regards to what occurs whenever they hit the W key or the key that we're going to use to thrust or move forward the spaceship based off of its current angle. So I'm just going to go else. And in this situation, I'm going to throw the if statement out here. And then we're going to just copy this. But it's pretty much going to be the same sort of thing. Paste. If the game board key is held equal to true, yes, we want that. And game board key held code is 65. No, that's not right. We want that to be 87 because that's represented by the W on the keyboard. Now we want certain things to occur here. First thing we want to do is set the movement angle to the current rotation angle. Remember, we are both having an angle that is going to remember which direction the spaceship is going on the screen, as well as which direction the spaceship is going to be currently spinning on the screen. If you don't remember from part 55, you're going to see here in a second. So to do this, we're going to go the ship again, and we're going to say set moving angle. And this is just going to set the moving angle to whatever the rotation angle is. Because remember, we want the spaceship to go forward. That means the moving angle and the rotation angle must be the same. And there you are. Now they're equal. So pretty simple way to make your moving angle and your rotation angle equal to each other. Then what I need to do is change the values of X and Y based off of the angle of the ship. And that way it will know whether to increase or decrease X and Y. Remember, as if there's a vector on the screen, like a big giant piece of graph paper. So to do that, I'm going to go to the ship, and I want to increase X velocity. Even though we are increasing the velocity, maybe it might make sense later on to change the name of this, because the X value can actually go up or down. But for now, I'm just going to leave it this way. So ship, X, move, angle. So we're just going to get the movement angle. And then to it, we're going to pass, we're going to go the ship, and we're going to pass it get moving angle, right like that. And then finally, if we want to slowly increase the moving angle, we're just going to put point one on there. So that's going to increase the moving angle incrementally. And that's going to get me my X vector position for the center of the ship. Now I want to get the Y position. This can be pretty much the same thing. Increase Y velocity, ship Y, move angle. And then all the rest of this is exactly the same. And all the code is available underneath of this video, and it's heavily commented. So if you're having trouble understanding something, go get the code, and it will all be much more understandable. So we calculated our X and Y positions for that guy. And then we're going to go the ship, move, like that. And that's going to make sure that it doesn't rotate more than 360 or less than zero, as we saw right here with this move method. That's all we're doing in move. Jump back here. And then after that, we need to move the ship to the center of the screen or wherever the X and Y positions are. It's going to start off in the center of the screen. To do that, we're just going to go Graphic, Settings, Translate. Translate is going to allow us to change the value of X and Y and use floats and all these other great things. Get X center, like that. We just need to get the center point for the ship. And there's X and here is Y. And it will make sure the ship moves to that X and Y position. So really simple. And then we just need to also allow it to rotate our ship. And we're just going to call the rotate method as well. And you just need to change this to radians because everything is going to be handled in degrees. The ship, 
and get rotation angle. And if we file save this guy and execute it, now we're going to be able to do all kinds of cool things with our ship. So there is our spaceship right there on the screen. And you can see all I'm doing is using three keys. A to rotate it counterclockwise, D to rotate it clockwise, and then W to thrust it. And then as you can see, it also goes off of the screen and reappears on the other edge. And you can also see that as I hold down the W key, the velocity continues to increase. However, if I flip my rotation angle around, it's going to take a while to get it to slow down a bit here. There you are. And I can also do all kinds of other really cool things. So that is how you move a spaceship around in a near infinite variety of different spaces. It's starting to look like a real video game. Like I said, all the code is available in a link underneath the video. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.